Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Each week while working on the new album, the Dead Milkman ask each other a question. Welcome to Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. The question this week is mine. It is, what are the three best things that happened in 2021, the year we're in now? And my three best things are as follows. January of this year, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were inaugurated. Why I think that's important, well, why that was good is because I think they're doing a good job helming the country much better than the previous guy. And I agree with President Biden's build back better agenda. I think it's an I think it's a good one. I think it's what we need. Um, it's an alliteration. Hmm? I said it's an alliteration. <laughs> build back oh. better. Yeah, I have it's an alliteration. Thing. And that's that's good too. And I think it's gonna be good for the country. I'm glad he got the his uh, infrastructure bill passed in the House and the Senate. And as long as it's implemented properly, it will be good. April. Uh, Derek Chauvin was, <laughs> this is my second one. Derek Chauvin was convicted of murdering George George Floyd. Derek Chauvin is the, uh, uh, and, the and the other cops too, the policemen in Minnesota who pretty much murdered George, George Floyd while arresting him. The reason that that's a good thing, in my opinion, is that it sends a hopefully a strong message to police, not just in Minnesota, but across the United States, that excessive force will not be tolerated uh, and the brutality must stop. Killing is not the same as policing. Um, people deserve a fair trial. Uh, they shouldn't be killed. <laughs> Police are not the executioner. They're not the judge and executioner. They're just supposed to be the police who do policing things. I'm not against police. I'm just against brutality and excessive. Before we started filming, you, you, uh, you, I'm against police. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, people, address your death threats to me, not Joe, because I collect death threats. Just bring them on in. You think I'm going to get death threats for that? <laughs> well, okay. <I'll> get <laughs> You wrote Punk Rock Girl. People love you. <laughs> November. Oh, November rain. Similar to that one. This is my third <laughs> one. And I'll, and I'll get out of your way. Uh, <laughs> the three guys who chased down and killed Ahmad Arbery were convicted. And I think that also is amazingly good uh, for the country. Um, again, it sends a message that vig vigilante justice should not be tolerated. Hopefully people will get that message. Uh, and we will have. If not, we'll take care of real it. justice, the justice of the courts. <laughs> yeah, we'll be the baseball bat. We'll get those vigilantes. So those people are are Travis and Gregory McMichael, who I guess Travis killed him with the gun, and the other guys. I don't know the and what and the guy also got convicted who 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 cha who uh, followed them with the camera and cornered well, them. So they're all. They're all convicted. My, my wife's great uncle was a vigilante, but at Ellis Island, they changed his name to Vigilant. <laughs> oh, Auntie. What a boot. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. That guy also is convicted of being a terrible cameraman because when all the important stuff happened, he was like moving around. Um, that was great, Joe. I, uh, I chose just stuff that was in my life for this year. Um, it's been a it's been a, a pretty rough year, but it's been pretty good too. I think I've touched on it before in like some of these where like dealing with <clears throat> pain and trying to get like lessons from it. So I think uh, when I start, I did like a group therapy that I'm still kind of in and um, it's like, it's kind of changed my life in a lot of ways. It's pretty cool. And I've actually made some friends who I consider kind of close 
uh, in a pretty short period of time. Um, and uh, it's not going to be my recommendation, but I would recommend, recommend anybody who's struggling in any way to seek out some kind of group thing because it's kind of, it's different than ind individual therapy and it's different than like video group, but it's worth it's in it. Person, in person group. Yeah, we had we have to wear masks and stuff, but still, uh, and robes with hoods and candles. <laughs> There's these like plastic dividers that it, it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, but it's also nice because I don't like people to know that I don't like to be that physically close to them. So those barriers are good. So I don't have to be like, hey, don't touch me. <laughs> anyway, so I guess that was one thing. But the second thing is that. I guess through that and various other things going on, I've learned how to trust myself and love myself, which is something I never really realized I didn't do before. I liked myself, thought I was all right, pretty cool, like C plus. And now um, I realize that I'm pretty awesome and I don't care if anybody thinks I'm not. You're very awesome. You are, yeah. I always thought you were. I mean, you, you, your hair looks like it's experienced some sort of windswept prairie thing. I don't know. What, I, it still was good. I don't have hair. I have to, I I have to be I jealous of your it. windswept prairie, prairie. I haven't washed it in like two, <clears throat> three days. And it does this weird stuff. I'm also coming down with something. So it's a good thing I'm not working. And then the third thing is um, just the entire experience of working on the new album with you guys. Like since we started going back into rehearsal space in like August, was it in August up to like recording um, has not only been a blast and I'm really excited about this new album, but it's kind of like been a good thread for me to like keep my sanity in some ways. So it's been a good outlet in that way too. So you can kind of tell what kind of year I've had so far. It's been great. And there's still another three weeks. <laughs> uh let's see well joe and dan stole my thunder for two out of the three things maybe my third will uh will redeem myself uh yeah my number one thing was that joe biden was inaugurated and uh, kamala harris became the first female uh, first black woman first asian american vice president in the history of our country and like joe i think they're doing a pretty good job certainly better than at yeah, I won't go there. Um, uh, number two was also number two. Um, number two was um, mine was that yes, we began rehearsing again, and we finally made some progress recording songs for the next Dead Milkman LP. And, and like Dan, I'm pretty excited about it. I think we did a really great job, and so far, so good. We just got to keep up the uh, the level of um, you know the level of quality. Um, and number three. Rush Limbaugh is dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I rest my case. Oh, it's not dead, but Limbaugh <laughs> is. <laughs> um, I'm um, for, for, for personal reasons, I, I don't want to go to. I'm going to pass on the question. Um, but if you had something good happen to you, I'd like to hear about it. Put that in the comments. And if, and if, you, if you had a shitty year and you want to put that in there, we'll, we'll commiserate with you. But I promise I'll be very talkative when we get to, I'll make up for it when we get to recommendations. But I just, for personal reasons, I, I, I'm going to have to pass on this one. Sorry, I know. Sorry. I have a recommendation in a book, another book. This one is an or, uh, Leftover Crack, an oral history, or the oral history of Leftover Crack. That's about the band Leftover Crack. Um, I, I specifically recommend this to people who like Leftover Crack already and want to know more about them, of course. But what is it? What is an oral history? How is it written? This was collected uh, interviews from people both in the band and surrounding the band, and then uh, arranged in a sort of logical order so you get, you get a story out of it. So Sturgeon, the main guy from Leftover Crack, talks a lot in here. And it's and it since it's interviews, oral interviews, it's written in a you read it in a style like it's a talky style. So it's kind of good. Uh <laughs> I mean it's the only history of Leftover Crack that I know about personally. 
and I was one of the people interviewed in it, so I have a few quotes about it. Believe it, yeah, believe it or not. I played several shows with them solo and also with the low budgets. And it turns out that Sturgeon is a Dead Milkman fan, so <laughs> that's why he... Was that, was that the interview he did with you in the... Uh, yeah, I... I um, it, that's very lame. Women's room? Um, they didn't, no, they didn't use that, actually. It was, this was a telephone interview someone did with me. They asked to interview me, but I passed for personal reasons. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. <laughs> um <clears throat> i would recommend uh everybody have a happy hanukkah what's left of it i guess until monday um i love jewish people i think i'm a pro-semite pro like, I, think, <laughs> I actually think jewish people are better <laughs> you're an uber semite we never say <laughs> there's a I, I we should form an uber semite thing just we just like the jews we just, we just all right it's in the yeah. um but i would also recommend um <clears throat> that you brush your teeth i know you guys do i would tell you three times but really who <laughs> if you do you're cool any more than that you're kind of a psycho but i do it twice a day and i would just recommend you do it at least once a day people That's it. Uh, I would like to recommend three things this week. Uh, one is a web-based trial uh, of, I put game in quotes, it's called Townscaper. Um, you can go to a website, we'll provide the link for it. And it's, it's more of like a relaxation, meditative activity, occupier kind of thing. Uh, basically, you click on, the, click on the screen and you create these little island towns and villages with piers and towers and connecting walkways. It's like, it's very soothing. And there's like water, sound and water droplets. It's, it's their islands, so they're in the water. Um, you're not competing. You're not trying to win points. You're not playing against other people. You're just like building these elaborate little villages and towns. Um, we'll probably flash up a picture of one that I was playing with earlier today. Um, and uh, you can also download the game for like your phone and stuff. It does cost a few dollars, but um, you can play it for free on the web. Uh, the second thing I would like to recommend is uh, there's been a number of these videos on YouTube for a while. There's a channel, I think it's called Bad Lip Reading, and they have a new one out called Bad Lip Reading of the New Dune Movie, which is quite good. Um, and, uh, and then the third thing I would like to recommend is something from... Uh, believe it or not, cracked.com. It's the best explanation and critique of NFTs I've ever seen so far. Um, so you can check that out. It's actually very well done. So those those are the three things that, it's a cat in front of me, but you can't see him because he's <laughs> uh, Those are the three things I would recommend this week. Cracked.com has had some of my favorite articles of all time. They were they were the person who, they were the thing that, that uh, um, first tipped me off to count What's his name? The guy who came up with the, the death touch and all that and just how absolutely bonkers he was. I found a video recently on that. But, yeah, Dean, I used to like um, Age of Empires better when you wouldn't be at war with somebody and you could actually kind of build up. And, and it was was oddly relaxing. Uh, and first and also, hey, thanks to everybody who wished me a happy Hanukkah. And it's time for your annual reminder that I'm not Jewish. But <laughs> I will take the happy Hanukkah. I get. A lot of them. People, when I'm in the office, people stop. I just want to say happy Hanukkah. Okay, fine. I'll take it. But I also <laughs> had to work on Christmas a lot in a lot of places that thought I was Jewish. And so it's, but yeah, I'm not a Christmas person. All right. Um, so let's get to uh, my recommendations. There's going to be a couple. This is a Philly-centric recommendation because last week, Dean uh, talked up Philly and our great art museums. So I'm going to talk up some stuff that's happening in Philly. Next Thursday night, which is Thursday, December 9th, at the Warehouse on Watts will be one of the greatest shows in Philly history. This is going to be really good. This is Boot Blacks with Philly's Void Vision. Wingtips are playing. And there's also a band called Crash Cathedral who are from Philly, who I didn't know about really until I looked them up. But, hey, they're, they're pretty good. So this is going to be good. This is going to be – remember back in the 80s when you would tell somebody, hey, Black Flag is playing with the Minutemen, and they would go like, 
I'm saving my money to see Journey at the Spectrum. <laughs> well, yeah, now it's like, hey, you know, this is going to be Boot Blacks and Void Vision and Wingtips and Crash Cathedral. And they're like, oh, I'm saving my money to see Best Coast at the Union Transfer. So those people will die alone and sad, but you will go to this show. So it's uh, actually, I'm going to uh, next week, uh, it's thing, it starts at eight, but we're going to record this and then I'm going to dash out uh, right after we record this and go right to that show because I really, really want to see it. And a lot of, if you're worried about COVID and, 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 and a lot of people in an area, this is a really good music show taking place in Philadelphia. So you don't have to worry about it being that crowded. And uh, yes, it is a school night, but you know, it's, it's, you rarely get shows like this. And again, I've talked up all these bands, but it's really great to have something like this in Philly. So you'll see, I'll, I'll put the link to where the show is and also a link to the band camp sites for each of the bands. All right, next. Remember last week, Joe held up one of these and I held up a, a sticker. These were made by a gentleman by the name of Bob Dix who is a very, very close friend of the band and an absolute sweetheart of a guy. Just one of the nicest people on the planet. He, um, I don't know, it, it made the rounds because we were flooded here in Philly. And he did this incredible painting, like Washington crossing the Delaware, but with Gritty and Green Man and that weird monk guy from the Northeast. Um, so he also does these, which are one of my favorite new Bob Dix things. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Um, apparently, Bob has a theory that uh, on Saved by the Bell, that this was actually what led to Showgirls. That this is actually the prequel to Showgirls. So my friend Dana and I were losing it. We're also trying to explain to my wife, who never watched Saved, that episode of Saved by the Bell, what the hell this was. But anyway, we'll put it up there. Bob Dix, the best way to find him, he's on Vampire Vampire Boy. It's a little character called Vampire Boy. Vampire Vampire Boy over at Instagram. And, and we'll put up the link to that. You're going to want to buy everything he's ever done. It's all fantastic. He has like characters that you can hang. And, and you know, he's got like the child sniffer from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Hey, I said it without cursing. Um, <laughs> and then the next up on my list, Philadelphia centric. This is Stickman Brew. And it's Mafia movie beer. It's the tiramisu, tiramisu stout, which is absolutely amazing. But look, up in the corner, look, one dog's facing this way, one dog's facing that way. It's, <laughs> there's like so much text on here. And I was when I was getting these at uh, I picked them up at a uh, the punk rock flea market last weekend, and I found out someone's like uh, Rodney Anonymous drinks that beer. Well, thanks for telling me. Yeah. I really appreciate that. But the I'm t it's really really good. These guys are right around the corner from me. Which should if, if you're coming with death threats, it should help you find me. Um, we had some guy threaten us recently, and he's like, "I'll come to your shows." I'm like, "Well, tell your mom to drop you off early because our opening acts are usually really good." Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but that's um yeah so that's uh that's the that and then finally last bit of advice um ever since i was young i've been voting for like 40 years now if i see something blank i usually write my name in and uh, i did it this time and i um i almost won <laughs> I, I think i tied somebody and i think it was like a coin toss or something somewhere up in city hall um so it was actually for like election commission and again people are like those people get their lives lives threatened and i'm like i've been in a punk band <laughs> <laughs> for like since I was 17, I get my life threatened every 10 minutes. I'll probably one of my cats will threaten my life. So um yeah, actually I'm not kidding. I got this awesome letter that I need to frame saying that <laughs> you've tied <laughs> somebody. And so apparently nobody wanted the job. But really, if write your name in because you 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 know probably not that bad of a choice. So yeah, I know it was four things, but they were all Philly centric, so it counts as one. All right, thank you. And sorry I had to pass on the other thing, but I'm, I'm going through a, a rough time with something else and I don't I, I don't want to talk about it. So but I do no want to hear good things from other people. <laughs>